You guys know the stats. You know, one in three children are, are on track to have diabetes in their lifetimes if we don't alter the course uh, of the country. I mean, we're spending the, you know, $147 billion treating obesity and its related conditions directly. Forget about all the additional costs related uh, to the issues. And believe it or not, this, this w adds a weight on me uh, in a serious way that 27 percent of eight, 17 to 24 year olds are, are no longer qualified for military service because of obesity. It's the number one disqualification for military service. And sitting across the table from retired four-star generals who look you dead in your eye and say, this is one of the nation's greatest national security threats is a weight that, that I will not forget. Um, so it's clear that the choices that we're making just aren't endangering our kids' futures. It's also endangering our country's future. So now is not the time that we can afford to be complacent. Uh, now is not the time to lose that sense of urgency the way we approach our everyday work. No, not at all. Now's the time that we have to double down on our efforts. Now's the time to break through the silos that we all tend to work in. We can collectively do a better job uh, at leveraging our efforts, at collaborating more closely. That's why today, days like today are just so important. Um, this is not just a nice time to gather. This is a really important moment where people can bring together their expertise, their knowledge, their models, uh, and really try to build off each other's work. And we need to think outside the box. Um, we welcome all serious parties who want to become part of the solution to the table. We can no longer afford to do our work in isolation from other stakeholders who are also vested in our children's future. We need to redefine and expand who we understand to be stakeholders. And we must build broader coalitions, broader than even the ones, uh, Tony, I think you laid out. Anybody who has a stake in the future of this nation has a stake in this issue. Anybody. And we need to really think through how, who are all the people uh, who, who will benefit from a healthier nation. I can't name anybody who wouldn't be. But making sure that people really begin to see it and through those lens is our job. We need to work to continue to pull the big levers, the major commitments that will help us take big strides forward. And one of the issues that we're going to be working very hard this year is, is really is ensuring that all families, all families, have access to healthy and affordable food. We know this is the problem that undermines the health of communities throughout the country, urban and rural alike. But the good news is on this one is that we really do know how to solve this problem. Uh, so we're going to be working with key stakeholders in the hope of really making big strides in this area. Another place where we, we hope to make a lot of progress this year is how we collectively speak about this issue, uh, particularly on nutrition. Um, part of the challenge in empowering families with the information they need is cutting through just the flood of nutritional information uh, that's out there. There's so many conflicting sources and an overabundance of messages that turn people off. So even if we get the basic information right and the basic message right, the multiplier effect um, of our collective voices is often lost. And I'm accompanying the new MyPlate uh, uh, icon. The USDA has released seven messages that are going along with it. Um, these messages include fill your half your plate with fruits and vegetables, make half your grains whole grains, um, enjoy your food but eat less. That was a big one. <laughs> uh, the USDA is going to be focusing on one message per quarter. So three months, just targeting in on one message, trying to drill down on that one message in the hopes uh, that we can really make some progress and, and make some penetration. Um, the, we're going to be needing partners just like you um, uh, to help coalesce around these set of messages and, and leverage our collective voice, which would be tremendously powerful. But beyond the major, the major strides we can work, beyond access, beyond those language efforts, our success uh, or failure, I think, will truly depend uh, on the small things. The First Lady launched this effort by planting a garden on the south grounds of the White House. Uh, it has been simply an amazing effort, uh, and the First Lady's vision uh, was stunning. Um, and as a chef, I can say it's been the most delicious project we've had uh, thus far. Uh, but let me just tell you a little story about what I mean by the small things. Um, Last summer, uh, we had a big harvest in the, in the White House with a bunch of chefs. And so when we plant and we harvest, we do it with normally uh, fifth graders from the D.C. area. And 
So the kids had planted, and so now we're coming. It was in, in July, and it was hot, and we <laughs> hot in D.C. And we, uh, so we gathered all the kids for a big harvest. And, you know, we were, gonna, we were trying to figure out what we were going to do, and, you know, it was hot, so we decided, you know what, we're just going to do the raw vegetables and some dips. That's it. So we're harvesting things like kale, peas, spinach, um, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, fennel, rhubarb. So I didn't sleep at all the night before because there's like 150 press right there taking a picture of everything that happened. And one kid, you know, with a, some broccoli that they didn't like uh, <laughs> would be a national disaster for us. <laughs> be a real big problem, seriously. The whole movement, everything we're doing would have been set back like two years. <laughs> and I was actually genuinely very concerned. I really didn't sleep very well. And so we had all these chefs come down, and there was all this excitement, and we're harvesting everything. We're putting all the cauliflower and the broccoli in these big platters. We're going to do a big family-style meal. And I turn around, and this little girl had taken the whole platter of cauliflower to, this, to the back bench, taken a third of it, which was a lot, uh, onto her plate, and was sitting there just stuffing her <laughs> face with cauliflower. It's the only time in my whole professional career I've had to ask a child to please put the vegetables back <laughs> on the plate. And, and I asked her, you know, wow, you really like cauliflower, huh? And she had no idea what it was. She didn't know what it was. She'd never tasted it before. And yet she was going to town on it. It was amazing. My friend Marcus Samuelson, uh, he, what he had harvested was rhubarb. He had his kids dancing around chomping on raw rhubarb. That's disgusting, <laughs> okay? But, but these kids were engaged in some part of the process of what it meant to grow and eat food. And that's a little thing, right? But, but that little thing is absolutely critical to making the connection and having the foundation uh, that we need, uh, that kids will build on in the future uh, to live healthier lives. So if we're going to give them uh, this chance, we have to foster those kind of moments for kids in any, in any way we can. And a lot of this stuff, I'm with the science. I, I know the, the, the critical nature of it, measuring and, and, and understanding exactly what's working where. Um, but the, a lot of this stuff is not measurable. A lot of these, a lot of these efforts are going to be putting that little seed, putting that little, uh, putting cauliflower in a young, in a young 10-year-old's mind, which is going to have an impact that I don't think we're going to be able to see the results of our investment uh, for years to come. These small connections can be forged in, in millions of different ways, uh, and it's, it's truly their foundation. So the First Lady, she often says and reminds us that, that, you know, we can't overcome this challenge with a piece of legislation. If we could write the bill to just solve this problem, we would. Um, it cannot be solved with a presidential decree. Instead, it's going to take the work and leadership from people like you, leadership from pe teachers and parents, from business leaders to youth themselves, very importantly, youth themselves, if we're going to reach our goal. But this is the moment. Uh, this time won't come around again for, for quite a while. So the First Lady, in, from the bottom of her heart and from the bottom of her mind, thanks you for your dedication and determination. Um, she firmly believes in her heart of hearts uh, that we can achieve this goal um, and once again fulfill the promise of creating better opportunities for the next generation than we were given ourselves. So thank you for your time and your dedication, and I would love to answer some questions.